Page 128, Morning Salute. They're giving you some solo repertoire, some pieces that you can play, some solos you can play for people when they say, really, you learn a piano, play me something. And I usually just say no. Play it yourself if you want to. When I was much younger, I loved playing for people. I would look for opportunities to play. And now that I'm a lot older, I don't want to play for anybody. Just go away. Now, this music is starting to look a little bit interesting. <laughs> nah, what's going on? Too many notes. I just rely on my routine, not my routine, the routine I use to learn a piece of music. I go through the steps and we'll see what happens. You're going to find a lot of times in music that the uh, music is nothing more than a bunch of scale passages and chord, broken chord stuff or block chord stuff going on. So if you can do the scales and arpeggios, it makes it much easier to read the music. Now there's some other little things thrown in too, but still a lot of it is just scales and arpeggios. So I'll look this over. I see it's one page long. It's actually longer because of the repeat signs, but I only have a page of music to learn. The clef signs are treble and bass, at least to start. Keep in mind, clef signs can change anywhere, but I just want an idea of to start. There's one sharp in the key signature, so it's either in the key of G major or E minor, because those are the keys with one sharp. If I look at the end, down at the bottom, or here, whatever the fingering is, we're in a G major chord. I figure it's probably G major. However, I'm still going to do the scales and arpeggios for G major and E minor. Two octaves now because of what the book is doing. And three eight time signature, which explains all the eighth notes. Each eighth note gets a count. Oh, well, okay. Now maybe not quite so bad. Right hand first. Let's make sure we got the fingering and the rhythm all worked out. And again, I try and finger things in a way I can connect everything at first. We'll do the articulation later. So right here, here. That's one, two, three, one. See that D's tied. And some people, they struggle with these tied notes. I don't get it. Well, if you're struggling with the tied note, then temporarily take out the tie and play all the notes. Here. I just played all the notes. There's just eighth notes. But then once you can do that okay, put the tie in. You just hang on to the note rather than playing it again. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Reach up octave, and now we're coming down the scale, part of it. I mean, we didn't come straight down the scale, but we came down part of it, and that's what we're after. A lot of times in scale passages, you won't do the whole thing, you do part of it. Sometimes you'll do more than an octave, or whatever, anything, whatever. And then on measure nine, during the rest, you come down to this position. So we're here. Two, three, one, two, three, this is fun. And then measure 13, you're here, and during the rest, come down here to that position. And then during that rest, you come up here. Back like you were at the beginning. So we're looking ahead as we're doing this to see what's coming, to see if we have to move the hand or whatever. You get into the habit of doing that, so you don't have to, oh, i got to remember to do that too. It'll happen. All right. And then the left hand, whether it's here, and then 5-2, so we're sort of in the left hand, the little fingers come down is all it is. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, okay. And then I'll measure nine, now the left hand gets the melody. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, so much for that. Not so bad, I hope. Put the hands together. And when I first put the hands together, I'll probably hesitate. I don't care. I just want to know how the hands and the fingers are working together. So we're starting here at the beginning, here, and then that's tied, then I play that, then I play that, now together, and then here, and then here, there. When I play that up sharp, it's by itself, the left hand has to come up. the rest you come down here the right left hand's fine you, you, you just come down a little bit it's the right hand, left hand yeah. 
13, just a broken chord, and then measure 15, and treble clef, you're coming up with the same notes. Bring your left hand over and have it over, ready to go, and then after it's done, you can play that and get the right hand out of the way. Bring the right hand up, here. And then you get bass clef. So you only got treble clef in the bottom stuff for one measure. I mean, in theory, you could have it for one note. You could have it for anything. But here, so measure 13, you're here. Coming over here. Here. And then you're back like you were at the beginning. So you have to practice these hand moves, and you have to look at the keyboard for that. But eventually, you're going to want to get rid of the hesitation. Right now, you can hesitate all you need to. I don't care. I can go here. I come up here, and then I'm here, and here. Yeah. So I work out the hands together, and then I go back over a few hundred times, and I slowly work out the hesitations. Now, in a piece like this, that's clearly in sections. We haven't talked about sections of music much, but you'll notice the repeat signs at measure eight. I would take that as a section. I would learn that much the first eight measures or so. I get it to where I can play that pretty well. Forget the rest of it right now. Just focus on those eight measures. And then once I have that, I set it aside. I don't play it again for a while. Just set it aside. And now you're, you're going to go for like from measure nine to around measure 16. And I don't go, I don't need to go measure 17 because at measure 17 to the end, it's pretty much like the beginning. I can already play that. So then I'm going to focus on measure nine is here get that worked out. And now once I have that worked out, then I go back and put it all together. A lot of people, including me until I learned better, when we would learn a piece of music, we would practice it always starting at the beginning. You learn the beginning pretty well. You get this because you're playing it so much. You get that pretty well, but then the other parts later on where you can't play it, you're here and you're struggling for this, you can't play this part. Yeah. Don't be playing the stuff you can already play when you're trying to learn a piece of music. Focus on the stuff you cannot play and get that under your fingers. And once you've got that under your fingers, then you can go back and put it together. When you keep practicing the stuff you can already play, when you're learning a piece of music, you're wasting time. I don't need to keep practicing what I can already play. Now, after I've got it learned, then I can keep going over it and experimenting with the interpretation and all. But when I'm first learning the notes and the rhythms, I want to focus on what I cannot play, not on what I can. Don't waste time playing stuff you can already play. Focus on what you can't play. <sighs> I keep saying this over and over. I can't stress it enough. It's so important. Otherwise, you waste so much time in your practice accomplishing nothing. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So once I have the notes and the rhythms, and I go back and I get rid of the hesitations. Speed is not important yet, but no hesitations. Then I can add the articulation, and we have the phrasing. And these chords, just play them. If you want to connect them, that's great, connect them. I don't agree with the phrasing, but that's what they're doing. They're mind that choppy. I, I'd like to, this to flow a little better. Now these curved lines that are good for the phrasing, they can also be used for slurs. And in a slur you don't always lift up before and after a slur. So if these are slurs, and they could be, in that case the first phrase could very well be the first eight measures. Yeah. one long sentence. Or maybe it's four measures. I don't know. However, when you have a series of eighth notes like this, I would recommend you connect them. Don't be lifting up in the middle of it like that. So I'm going to suggest for these first eight measures and the last eight measures, you connect it as one long sentence. And you can connect this left hand too which means a measure nine, connect all that. So I'm going to connect all that 
together. Play it all connected. That's my interpretation of it. Your interpretation could be different. Your teachers could be different. Do what your teacher tells you to do, but I'm just going to connect it. I, you can lift up for the rest. They're built in. Now for the dynamics, P is piano for soft. That's the melody. These chords need to be very soft, very light. Major nine, that's loud. That's the melody. These chords need to be in the background somewhere. And uh, you see the diminuendo there on ground major 14 to 16. You're loud, each one comes down. So you're soft. You finish it soft. Speed, allegretto, uh, yeah, it's, it's about where I've been going. This is the fun. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. And just somewhere in the middle. You can speed it up a little more if you want to. It's a felt. Experiment with different speeds and see what you think. Just make sure it's accurate. Don't go faster than that. And you don't go fast. It's not allegro. No. Just let it flow along nicely. Whatever that means. Now the repeat signs. When you finish measure eight, you're going to repeat back to the beginning. You play all that mess again. And then Measure nine to the end is surrounded by repeat signs. So you can play all of that twice. So the thing is actually twice as long as it looks. That's not what I want to hear in the morning. That's not a morning for me. I'd need more, a lot more coffee for that kind of a morning salute. But that's what somebody thought it would be like. It's okay. Remember the natural accents? One, two, three. Left, uh, the chords are being played on it wherever they are. Okay. Let's play it together slowly and check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the dynamics. We're not performing it. Just notes and rhythms. Uh, we will do the repeats though. We're going to do the whole thing. I'll give us three counts. One, ready, go.
Rest.